is only war. What is up, gents? 40K Dirtbags here. We got a leak video for you guys today. Hopefully, we don't get in trouble for this. But uh, Grey Knights were leaked by Winners SEO, I believe. There's about four or five data cards that they posted ahead of time, I guess. They were looking, or they thought the Space Marines were all Space Marines and Grey Knights are uh, Imperial, so they're gonna be coming out Wednesday. So by the time you guys see this video, we are gonna do an updated video on Wednesday when the full data sheet comes out. We're just gonna make a quick video for you guys for the uh, updated five cards that they're that they released which i'm super fucking hyped for i'm sure you guys are too if you guys have seen this but we are going to be playing uh gray knights at the beginning of 10th edition we were ranked number one gray knight player in the world last year uh so if you guys are new to the channel definitely hit the subscribe button if you guys are gray knight players uh if you guys just like 40k in general definitely hit the subscribe if you guys are interested in getting better at 40k in general uh head over to the patreon support the channel we have a competitive dirtbag patreon where i actually get to meet or not meet me sorry if you want to go to a major gt you can but uh month weekly and monthly events that we do for the patreons i release everything ahead of time on patreon but also uh one-on-one -on -one coaching chatting ideas everything uh we talk on discord so head over there but let's get into the video real quick it's going to be a quick video i'm going to go more in depth when the full release comes out so we're just going to be talking about the data cards today but the biggest question to me when these things get released is what do we get for the advance and charge sorry the auto advance six that's uh the the trait that we have for gray knights and the first thing that i saw in the dread knight was the advance and charge and fall back so this thing is huge is, is awesome it basically has the teleporter built in for that one cp that we used to have uh, in ninth edition one cp you were able to fall back shoot and charge now you can fall back and charge and advance and charge and advance and shoot. So that is huge. You see this right here? So this model is eligible to shoot and declare charge the turn in which it advanced or fall back. So it's speed eight plus that auto advance six, you're looking at a 14 inch advance and shoot uh, or a 14 inch advance and charge. Like that is that is insane. 14 inch Nemesis Dread Knight uh, moving around the table. It's a two up, four up still. Uh, it's got the teleport assault, so you can pick it up and, and put it down uh, for the teleport assault rule that we can pick up three units. 13 wound stays the same. Leadership six, obsec of four uh, for the unit, and toughness eight. So the toughness is, it went up a little bit, but also everything else went up a little bit. I think the melters are strength eight, so melters are gonna be wounding you on, um, on fours. But let's go over the weapons. Uh, they released the Nemesis Dread Knight Grandmaster in the preview, so I, I was saying the uh sword is not really worth it anymore it got it lost one damage in the sword profile so the sweep isn't as good uh, it's only ap1 for the sweep attack so i don't think we're going to be running the swords as much i think the nemesis uh, great hammer is going to be what we're going to be using it's five attacks hitting on fours uh strength 14 so that one cp to to charge in and do mortal wounds you're going to get to roll 14 dice if you're double the the strength or double the toughness you get two more dice so basically you're rolling 16 dice charging in Wounding on fives, those are mortal wounds, so I think a max of six mortal wounds, and then you get to attack. So these guys are gonna be freaking insane uh, in combat. AP three, D6 plus one. Uh, so anything on a two plus, you're killing Terminators most of the time. Uh, Dreadfists are kind of just shit. <laughs> don't, don't take the Dreadfists. Uh, and then the Incinerators, they also ignore cover. So they shoot 18 inches, so you're threatening what 18 32 inches with the flamers uh that auto hit 2d6 uh ignore cover uh strength 6 ap1 one damage so with nemesis dread knights being able to shoot out of combat now uh auto hitting strength or 18 inch out of combat shots is is kind of insane like if you don't want to fall back and charge even though every turn you're probably going to be falling back and charging something else uh that's that that's huge so the side cannon goes up to damage three just like the grandmaster 24 inch range six shots hitting on threes strength 10 ep1 three damage so three damage you don't need impair amplification anymore you just do a flat three damage which is nuts uh and then the silencer you get uh sustained hits so exploding sixes uh 12 attacks hitting on three strength six ap0 though which kind of stinks one damage so I think I'm gonna be running my guys with the incinerators just because they're gonna be threatening so freaking far with the with the auto advance six. Uh, and then you get to shoot in combat, which you automatically hit, uh, ignoring cover. So 
This guy looks fucking awesome. Imagine uh, two to three of those guys. They released Drago. So Drago uh, was leaked. Uh, speed five, toughness five, uh, two up saves, seven wounds, leadership six, one up six. So basically kept everything the same, except he's now toughness five, was toughness four, and he has a four up in bonus save instead of a three up in bonus save. So they increased his invul save by one. Uh, he lost one damage on his storm bolter. It used to be a master crafted storm bolter. Now it's just a basic puny piece of shit storm bolter that i didn't understand uh and he's got a scourging which is anti-demon two plus ignores cover which is cool uh 18 inch range three attacks hitting on twos strength six ap2 two damage so he he lost the two damage on the uh storm bolter but he gained two damage on his psychic shot which he can shoot both profiles um so ap2 two damage three shots not bad. Uh, if it's a demon, you're auto wounding on two plus, uh, which is really, really good. So the deep strike leader, teleport assault, uh, his sword is anti demon two plus. So he basically got his warlord trait of basically the demon, uh, ignoring saves built into a, a, a weapon, Titan sword. So six attacks, weapon skill two, strength eight, AP four, which is insane, uh, three damage. So everything else basically stayed the same. Um, he lost two on the strength. I think it was strength 10. Might have been strength 8. I think it's strength 8 plus 4 strength. Uh, and that's it. So he gives the unit. So if you're running him with paladins, we don't know if paladins get any crazy keywords or anything special. But if you're running him in a unit of 10 terminators or 10 paladins, they're going to have a field of pain of a 4 up against mortal wounds, which is awesome because there's going to be a lot of devastating wounds in this edition. And... Uh, once per battle. So once per battle, everybody was saying that it's only once per battle, but still all you need is once per battle to get an uh, insane charge off. So if he's coming in deep strike from uh, on turn two with a unit of terminators or, pal or paladins, uh, you get to increase that charge range by three from deep strike. So that is that is insane. Once per battle, when this model unit declares a charge uh, in the same turn, it is set up as reinforcements using deep strike ability, add three to the charge roll. So you basically have a six inch charge coming in from deep strike, which is bonkers. So these guys are coming down turn two. All your guys are running around deep striking turn one. Like you're just getting into position. All of a sudden turn two, you come down either in the backfield, uh, if they leave an opening and then you charge on a six or you come in up front and then you charge in on a six. So that's worth taking just right there. <laughs> Drago in a, in a squad of, of Death, Death Star coming in is going to be insane. The Terminators they released. So the Terminators get lethal hits uh, if they make their charge. So they automatically wound on sixes for the charge roll. Oh, I, I did notice. We're going to go get more in depth of what really changed uh, when, the, when the full lick came in. But he didn't have any rerolls. Like literally no rerolls for the army. He's the best of the best. He's only leadership six. I thought he'd be like a four or five. Uh, but nothing crazy. He basically, they only gave him feel no pain uh, on a four plus from mortal wounds, and uh, can have a plus three charge for deep strike. That's it. So that's kind of eh, it's okay. But the plus three range is worth to just bring him alone. All right. So the terminators are toughness five. So it looks like all the terminators in the game got plus one toughness, and then have a four up invuln save. So these guys are two up, four up, uh, three wounds. Uh, leadership six, two opsec, which is cool. If you bring the banner, you actually get opsec three per guy. So that's actually pretty huge. Uh, these guys, again, they get the lethal hits automatically wounding on sixes when they make the charge. Uh, but this is really cool. So hopefully the paladins have this as well. But in your command phase, you can return one destroyed model excluding characters to the bearer's unit. So you can actually bring a, a, a Terminator back every single time if you bring the Apothecary or just upgrade one of these guys to the Apothecary. You just get to bring one back for free. No CP, just boom, brings one back, which is freaking insane. Uh, again, I think the Incinerators are going to be really good in 10th edition. Ignoring cover, uh, turret, so auto hitting, strength 6, or strength 6, AP 1, 1 damage, D6 shots range 12 so these guys coming down from deep strike being able to flame some people and then charge uh side cannons are two damage three shots hitting on threes strength eight ap1 two damage storm bolters everybody has storm bolters and the silencer is uh probably the shittiest one all the weapons now there's no falchions halberd swords it's basically all the nemesis force weapons are all psychic and strength six ap2 two damage so just imagine everybody having a halberd uh in the army they all have four attacks uh, I don't know if the leader, if there's leaders in each squad, but it doesn't show anything like if the leader has this, they get one extra attack. It literally just has 
the Terminator. So I don't know if like the back of the cards are gonna have different leaders stuff or if the leader has one extra attack or not, but uh, having everybody have, you know, four attacks base uh, is is awesome. <laughs> and strength six, AP two, two damage. So you're gonna be wounding a lot on threes and fours. So yeah, those are the Terminators, not bad. Kind of hoping the Paladins get, get to bring hammers, but these guys do not. So hopefully the Paladins can bring some hammers hitting on twos. Grandmaster Voltus, uh, also if you're noticing, there's not a lot of psychic shooting. These guys have no psychic shooting. Drake was the only one I saw with psychic shooting. Uh, Terminators have no psychic shooting, like psychic powers. Uh, Voltus though, doesn't have any psychic powers, which I, 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 I don't get. Uh, he has a hammer of flame psychic ability, which you have to roll on a four plus and they take D three mortals on a six. You take D three plus three. If you're in combat with them, <laughs> like, sure. Uh, but if he's leading a unit, that unit is minus one to hit. So that's going to be uh, beneficial if he's, if they're coming in from, um, deep strike or anything like that. Uh, his hammer though is pretty, pretty tanky. Uh, it has five attacks hitting on twos. Strength 10, AP2, 3 damage. So hopefully our hammers, if, if we can bring hammers, are kind of like this, maybe hitting on threes instead of twos. Uh, but Voltus is definitely going to smash if you're bringing him. I'm not sure if, if I'm going to bring, bring him over Drago or another character or the Nemesis Dread Knight, but being able to have you know minus one hit on a squad that's just going to be shooting most of the time, but then you're losing out on the hammer of flame ability because you're not really going to be in combat. So... Yeah, so it's really just anytime you're selected a fight. Not not super beneficial. Uh, the Interceptors, so they released or leaked the Interceptors as well. The Incinerators, again, I think are going to be cool, but these guys are going to be working a little bit different. They have, they have move out, shoot, and then fall back or move automatically with a 6-inch move. So these guys can move 12. You can advance and shoot them because uh, there's nothing that has assault in here i'm not sure we're going to get anything special with assault like psychic turned into assault weapons but their uh toughness four two up save which most of our guys are two up saves now which is insane hopefully the points don't don't go up too much uh leadership six obsec one so drago has the same leadership as an interceptor <laughs> which doesn't make sense but uh two wounds each now their guns they have silencers which again i don't think i'm going to be looking at silencers at all uh, side cannons are strength 8, AP 1, 2 damage, and storm bolters are the same, but the incinerators are range 12. So basically you have a 24 inch flamer, essentially, because they move 12, shoot 12, uh, D6 auto hitting, ignore cover, strength 6, AP 1, 1 damage. So these guys are just going to be killing chaff, they're going to be killing uh, people up front for the screens. Um, or you can bring them as side cannons where they just hop out of cover, shoot something, and then hop back in cover. Their special thing is personal teleporters in your shooting phase after this unit has shot. If there is not within engage range, you can then make a normal move of six inches, but you cannot charge. So these guys, if you're thinking about it, they can hop out 12, or if you think about the rhino, the tactic with the rhino, they, uh, what did they get? They have fly, psyker, infantry, imperium. Awesome. So they don't have fucking jump infantry. That is what we were looking for. So infantry, psyker, fly, grenade, imperium, and interceptor squad. So these guys can then go in the rhino and they hop out 15 still, shoot 24 inches with their side cannons or incinerator. So they hop out 15, shoot 12. So it's 27 inch threat. And then they move another six. So they can basically move. 15 inches out of a rhino, shoot something, and then move another six. So it's basically 21 inch movement uh, to get in the position uh, across the table turn one. So turn one, you have one rhino, two interceptor squads just basically hop out and take over both the side objectives uh, and then wait a turn. And then every turn, they're just basically hopping out, shooting, hopping back, hopping out, shooting, hopping back the entire fucking game until people get close. So I think bringing weapons prior was not worth it. Now bringing weapons is going to be worth it for your interceptor squads. They're going to kind of take a little bit of a, of a different role. They might bring one uh, side cannon or one incinerator. So that way they can hop out, shoot the incinerator, hop back. If they do get close enough, you can then have uh, four force weapons to do still strength six, AP two, two damage. So <laughs> these guys are really fucking good. Uh, I'm glad that they didn't put jump uh, infantry or jump packs on them. The Dread Knight, we already went over, and that was all the leaks. So let me know in the comments, comments below, guys, what you guys think about this. 
I'm excited about Drago. I am, if they don't release a new model, this is still the old fucking shitty model. I'm gonna be turning a uh, Abaddon model or, or maybe a line model into Drago to make it look fucking super awesome for 10th edition. So that's gonna be my next project once uh, they kind of show what what's coming up for the, all the data cards. <clears throat> but head over to Discord if you guys aren't there on there yet. If you guys do like the channel, definitely go watch some other videos uh, on the channel. And if you guys want to support us, we sell dice, stickers, objective markers on Discord. And head over to Patreon if you want to get into competitive 40k for 10th edition. So appreciate you guys. Thanks all the supporters already. Uh, and again, we're going to be making videos tomorrow and Wednesday when all the data cards come out. So appreciate it. Good luck. And we'll see you in another video soon.